thing on, everything else on. We all kind of ready? ready? Go for it. Okay. and welcome to Board Game Inquisition where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you might want to have in your collection. But today we're not doing a review. So no. In, no, we're not doing a review today. As you may notice, I'm not on my own. And I'm not on my own because I'm not going on my own to a very particular event this year, which is Eschenspiel. So we're both going for the first time. Yes. So this is my husband, Brian. Say hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. <laughs> And Brian is like the secret backbone of Board Game Acquisition. You may recognise him from such videos as our annual roundup last year, the Golden um, Cleric yeah. Awards. Is that what we called it? We in called it something fun. And my hands from that Dice World Games. That, yeah, that's right. Brian also does the Let's Play videos with me. And of course, so he's coming to Essence. So I thought it was kind of fair that when I was going to do my preview for the games I was most excited about for Essence, that we should include him because he's coming yeah, too. I guess to be a part of this. See, normally in our house, I choose the games. And to be fair, I'm kind of good at it, right? Kind of. Kind of, yeah. I'm on a, I'm on a good streak. I kind of, I know what we like to play or what suits us. So I think, I think I'm a good judge of it. Um, you don't normally get to pick so much. It all has to be vetted. This is the fun of having a wife who reviews board games, right? Yeah. Yeah, you have to put I'll up with it. anything. <laughs> you say this, but it's not entirely true. It's only mostly true. So because of this, we're going to pick five games each that we're super excited to learn more about or purchase at Essen. Yes, we are. Have you prepared? <laughs> Do you yeah. have notes? We have notes. One second, one second. We have notes Maybe. on our phones because we're not we're not printing everything out. Um, and yeah, and I must say that in general, it was hard to pick five things I was really excited about. Isn't that really lame? Yeah, the, the, this year there's so much Kickstarter stuff coming out that it seems to have taken away a lot of the. Mm. the I don't know the. The, the push to release things at Essen. Yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of true. Um, I know I went last year just for a day and I had a list of things that I really wanted to get. Um, and for those of you who watched that video last year about me going to Essen and having my picks, A, congratulations for sticking with me for another year. I, um, I, I completely applaud you. The second thing I'd like to point out is that I looked at my list, my wish list from Essen last year, and I actually acquired pretty much everything on it. And in particular, the second hand games I was after in the past year, I managed to pick them all up and try them out. So that's just a kind of a, a nice thing, a nice and thing what to point out. Um, what was your recommendation from Spiel 2018? Oh, that's a really, really tough choice, actually, isn't it? Which one do we? Which ones do we even keep? I think the the only ones that are still here are some of the things I brought back. We traded away a lot of things. Clans of Caledonia. That was a good pick, actually, but it wasn't even released last year. It was just something we wanted to pick up. Trajan was on my list last year, and that's enough. No, it's fortunate Trajan came out last year. No, but I wanted to get a copy of Trajan, that's the true. older game, and finally got that. That was amazing. Okay, so enough chit-chat about all sorts of shenanigans. Nice chit-chat. Really? Yeah, we should want to chit-chat. You just want to keep chit-chatting and not yeah. really have a purpose to our video? No viewer will like that. Oh, <laughs> viewers will like anything. <laughs> If that was true, I'd have way more subscribers. Um, okay, so we're going to start in on this list. And as I said, we've got five each. And hopefully I'll make some sort of shiny graphic. Six um, each. Six each? I have I, six. Okay, okay, fine. If he has six, I have six. That's pretty fair. And I'll put up the pictures of the boxes. I just realized I should have oh, arranged yeah. our sitting a whole lot better for where I could have put the picture. Because it'll have to be like yeah. here. This is the only free space in the screen. Uh, which is fine. So do you want to go first or should I go first? Or should we roll for it? Um, I'll go first. Okay, fair enough. You go. You Actually, go. Actually, usually the youngest goes first in games. That's true. I am the younger, but that's not true of all games. So. So we can go for. I can go first. If you want me to go first? Okay, go first then. Okay. So the first game I am interested in is okay. a game called Colomo. Mm hmm. Who's it from? It is from Final Frontier Games. Okay. A designer <laughs> called John Pack Catton. Oh, you're actually naming the designers. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh, it's okay. in front of me. He's okay. done stuff. He's done a lot of Western team games that I've heard good things about, like Hangtown and Sierra West. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't I'm really have a very interested in games. kind of giving it a demo because I've heard lots of things. Haven't ever seen any of his games available. So mm -hmm. there's a chance for us to go sit down, play one of his games, and mm -hmm. if it's good, we'll take it. Okay, so so these are games you just want to see as opposed to games you just want to buy. Well, most of these games, like, we're going to be there for four days. We may as well sit down and play the game before we buy. Oh, yeah, I definitely recommend we should try it before you buy. I just, these aren't things that you're going to show up and go, here's my money, give me my yeah. game. Yeah, well, it's got some great keywords like simultaneous action selection, which is a word <laughs> I always love. No downtime, always good. Cool, so this is a Western theme game then? Yeah, and it's got some cute meeples. Okay, well, uh, you know, I'm sold on the meeples. We don't actually have a lot of Western games. They're usually kind of the party games, aren't they? Like, flick them up or Cult Express. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have anything else like that here. Do we have a Western game? 
Not that I can think of, but I'm sure someone, some eagle eye viewer will point out. <laughs> we'll point out, oh, you've another Western game. <laughs> um, if, if we do have one, we've forgotten about it, so clearly it wasn't worth having. Yeah. Um, following up, actually, on the Western theme, I too have a Western theme board game on my list. Um, so number one, actually, I don't think I even need to read my notes. Um, this is Hacienda. Now, this is the second edition of Hacienda, which is by a big friend, uh, hopefully of the show, uh, and who I'm a huge fan of, which is Wolfgang Kramer. <laughs> Um, and this is also a game about cattle rustling. Actually, we had Great Western Trail, but I guess no, we don't. We don't anymore, but we did. We we played we played that for a bit. So it was another mm. Western game. Maybe there's more Western games we thought about. But I'm such a huge fan of Kramer um, that I would love to get my hands on more of his games and try them out. And hey, as you pointed out, we don't have very many Western games. Um, mm. It's got all those fun keywords like area control and cards. <laughs> I'd like to point out that like I don't actually know a ton about all of the games I'm talking about, but these are ones that I'm excited about. And that's on purpose. I don't always want to know everything about a game before I purchase it because I think that takes some of the mystique out of it. Um, this is why I don't watch, you know, how to play videos <laughs> and stuff like that. But what I do want to know is that this looks interesting. Here's some mechanics I really enjoy. I kind of like taking a chance a little bit. Yeah, a lot of times Don't you're we... just looking for the design that are the mechanics of the game are mm. how it all hangs together. Exactly. So while I don't have any in-depth explanations for, you know, why this game is amazing, I do know that I really like the look of it. I really like the designer. Um, and I think it should be fun. It actually really looks like Chacal a little bit or Mexica. Sure. Lovely hair. <laughs> 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 All right, Brian. The master of it. So the next, next one list. is a game I cannot believe it's called Nas called Snowdonia Two. It's called Foothills <laughs> by Tony Bordell. Yeah. I think I pronounced that name Tony correctly. Tony Bordell. Yeah. Who's mm -hmm. a guy we actually really like. I really love Snowdonia. Yeah, we like really like Snowdonia. Um, How have you not got the Alu Bari, the cup of tea game, the tea game he's just made that's coming out this year that also looks suspiciously like Snowdonia but with a roundel on it? Yeah, but this is Foothills, it's a two player only game. Which oh, so it's that's basically rare. supposed to be Snowdonia but faster. Hmm. And like it's got Snowdonia. a lot of mechanics in Snowdonia. One mechanics I'm kind of really looking forward to is the cards are double sided. Okay. One side has a powerful action on it and the other has a weak action. <gasps> so when you do your action, you then only have the weaker action available to you to do the weak action and get the, the good action back again. That sounds vaguely like broom service, you know, where you have the option of doing a good action or a not so good action. Yeah, and it's very similar to the mechanics but of Snowdonia, to be fair. Snowdonia is a train game, for those of you who don't know, but it's really about building a railroad, less about trains. It's about clearing the rubble and building yes. stations. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty fun to play. So yeah, I like I like, I like his yeah. designs. I think it'd The be last review I heard of Snowdonia, someone put it in Tibet. Snowdonia is in Wales. Yes, it's a Welsh mountain. And it's a British designer too, Yeah, as far as I'm aware. So good on him. I mean, he has yeah. a couple of releases. At this I, and if you ever get a chance to have a look at the master set for Snowdonia, that thing is impressive. Yeah, it's a really chunky box. Did any of you actually pick it up this year in the Kickstarter? I would love to, but we had just got Snowdonia and it seemed awfully early to be going all in on a giant box pledge. So we, got Snowdonia. we didn't just get Snowdonia, we got it in a trade. And the trade was basically half a page of Snowdonia plus all these plus all mini expansions. expansions that we still have to get to. Yeah, we're getting there. Essen is totally going to help us get through our, you know, already played games list. Yeah. We have, <laughs> have no games on our to be played list. It's true, but we've games we need to play more of. Okay, so that's a good pick. Um, so this actually is the only game that I am one hundred percent certain that when I get there, I want to buy. I might actually pre-order it. And don't laugh, folks, but I would love to get myself a copy of Bubble Tea um, from Renegade Games. And for those of you who don't know, including myself, actually, because you can't get bubble tea in Ireland. It's a type of tea. Apparently, it's rather delicious. Um, and in bubble tea, you make tea. And it comes, watch with it, its own shaker with dice inside. And you get to shake it out and make the teas. Is that the coolest thing ever? I'm sorry. I saw it. I was just like, I am sold. And it's adorable as well. It just looks like a really fun, light and entertaining game. And you get to rattle your dice around. Um, and you, you know, take a rocket. Well, if Star Fires of Catan has taught us anything, it's always worthwhile shaking your rocket. So that is my real, that is my real pick. That's the one thing. If I could only that's go to Essen and come home with, that's the one I would want. That's good because that's probably the cheapest game on your list. It is definitely the cheapest game on my list. So yeah, so bubble tea. Bubble okay, tea. What's so, next? So my third game on the list is actually a demo only. It will only be available them. It's called so Infinity it? Defiance. Infinity was a war game system for a small squad based combat, mm -hmm. and it was all about. It, integrating cover and it was a real you know maybe five to ten man squads against each other mm -hmm. so now they've come out with a gloomhaven-esque and uh, dungeon crawler 
I like the Infinity system, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what they've done now with mm. the, the Dungeon Cross. It'll be a co-op game, so we won't have to fight. <gasps> a co-op game? Oh, thank God. <laughs> Actually, no, no, this is terrible. We also can't do co-op games. We can because it's Dungeon Cross. <laughs> There's one of the few co-op <laughs> games we can do. We have a problem with direct confrontation games or games where it's very much one versus the other's wits because it's, it's no fun for me and you just walk all over me. But then we were like, oh, we'll play co-op games. We can team up together. And then... <laughs> He's just the boss of everything, and you just sit there and go, "Okay, yeah, I'll do whatever you just told me to do. That's fine. Maybe I'm just too weak-willed for this." But generally speaking, and also we find co-ops really easy because you're so smart. It's super annoying. Like we've gone through a bunch of co-ops in the hope we'd find one that was difficult. Well, a lot of times co-ops the system, and I do systems for a living, so yeah. they're pretty easy for me to. So yeah, so these, these are the kind of games. This is definitely the kind of game I would not have chosen for us. Yeah. So we'll have to see how it goes. I like that it's a demo at least. So, yeah, so a, we, we can test it out and if I feel miserable we'll know what happens. And it's a co-op with dice rolling and you it's a sci-fi <laughs> team so it's a, we don't even have that many actual sci-fi teams. It's games. true because I just wouldn't upgrade Termus to get to go ahead project. It just mm -hmm. I just I just couldn't I just couldn't justify it. I love Termus is possibly my favourite game. I've played Gaia Project and I really like it and it's the, the space version of Termus to yeah. But other than that, yeah. yeah, we don't really have a look. Race for the Galaxy is a space game. No, it's not. It's a solo <laughs> game with some cards. That it has a team. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's still okay. Space. Okay, but so it's a great game. It's a, it is a great game. Okay, I love my haircut. I got my haircut, and it's driving me nuts. This piece at the front. So my apologies. Okay, so next on my list, which isn't. Oh, by the way, this isn't really in any order. Bubble tea should be Mine's first. Mine's in alphabetical order. Uh, mind in the order from the tabletop together tool, which I highly recommend, folks. If any, if you're going to any events and you're trying to decide what games you want to get or look at lists, you should definitely check it out. Um, tabletop together tool, it's fantastic, and um, the guy who makes it is also a really nice guy and takes lovely photos on Instagram. You should totally go and see what he does. He does good mm -hmm. reviews too. Okay, so it was me, wasn't it? Yeah. <gasps> so. The next item on my list is one I debated about for quite a while because there's been a bit of controversy around this game. Um, and this is Barrage from <laughs> from Cranio Creations. Yeah, he knows this because I had to stop the camera and I had to restart the camera. Um, you got a good shot this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so Barrage is a game about redirecting water and using dams. It's a heavy euro game and the problem was there was issues with its kickstarter with it firstly being delayed and then some damaged pieces and it just i don't know and as much and all as we love simone luciani he does have a tendency to have maybe well in our in our opinion anyway just one too many mechanisms in his games like newton was very close to being a really good game and then there's just one extra thing too many or one extra thing to worry about so i was a little worried about that with braj and i'm not gonna lie um, Tom Fassel turned around for me a little bit. Um, he's actually one of the few reviewers I think that we would reasonably rely on. Um, because well, we don't initially agree with him, but no. he does give it a very solid review. But the thing is, when you get to know Tom, I think the more you watch him, and you'll know you'll you Tom is will always be Tom regardless of whatever. And once you realise I don't like things like the way he does or whatever, I find you can fit in quite well. And I really enjoyed his review of Raj. It made me really think about it another bit. Um, so that's why it's on my list. As, as you pointed out when I discussed this before, we'll probably open up the box and check the components <laughs> before we walk away <laughs> and check it all fits together nicely. Um, but that is my pick. So oh, Barrage. Okay. Are you sure we're not going to be um, fighting each other in War War One or something, Barrages? <laughs> No, it's not that kind of barrage. So, okay. what's your next so pick? So, my next pick is mm -hmm. a sequel. I just noticed that there's a trend of sequels in, in my... Sequels! <laughs> yeah. Take two. So, my <laughs> my sequel mm -hmm. is Plans of the West Kingdom. Oh, really? You put it on yeah. there? I put it on there. Okay, okay. Shem Phillips and S.J. Mac it's <laughs> McDonald's. It's from design. Garpill Games anyway, isn't it? Uh, Garpil no, or Renegade, Renegade Games. Game it's Gar Garpill are the people who publish it in New Zealand. And then Renegade put it, I think, at the rest of the world. Something like that. Anyway. They're, anyway, con they're connected. We really like the Architects of the West Kingdom. It's a very fast um, worker placement game. Mm, yeah, it's a good And this game. looks like it's added bag building. And we do like bag building. Oh, that's true. We do like bag building. Orleans is a great game. 
Hollyans, Quacks of Cranberg. I like. I the, forgot there was bags and quacks. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where do I get my potions from? Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. So we want a couple of bag builds, mm -hmm. and this looks like a. Uh, if it's a, if it is any way of development of architects, then it should be mm. excellent. Oh yeah, that's true. I think it's got a good pedigree behind it, doesn't it? Like yeah. you know, it sounds like it should be good. Well, it's like the, his fifth or sixth game. He had the three games in the Nazi series. Yeah, the Nazi and trilogy. And this is the second one in the the Western Kingdom series. So. Mm. He should. He's definitely maturing as a developer. As a developer, yeah, as a designer, I suppose. Yeah, it's got. It's got. To, it's that. It's something that we probably should check out. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm not entirely sold. I feel like Architects hits a particular spot. And what would the next version bring to it? You know what I mean? Would it just be a slightly different version of it? Well, we all know Terminator Two is better than Terminator. That does nothing to do with <laughs> Paladins. <laughs> Although I do love Terminator Two. Um, <laughs> Okay, so not, not a bad pick. That's not a bad pick. I can see why you would choose it. I think it's probably the better thing. Okay, so what's next on my list? It's, it's not a good pick. <laughs> I just, I don't know how different it is. Well, like, demo is you know, yeah, exactly. We can go and have a look. That's probably the better plan. Okay, so we're getting closer to the bottom of my list. Okay, so the next item on my list is one that I saw come up a lot. I think it was from Gen Con. It came out like the most recent con and there was a yeah. lot of pictures of this. Um, and it definitely caught my eye. I'm not sure how much we need it, but I, I want to have a look at it definitely and look at it a bit closer. And this is Ishtar Gardens of Babylon. Um, and this is from designer Bruna Casala, who we might all know from Five Tribes fame. And it's being published by Aiello. So it's going to be gorgeous. And the truth is, it is gorgeous. If you go look it up in Board Game Geek, it's full of shiny crystals, some very funky looking meeples. And it's a tile laying game in which you are a gardener um, and you're trying to kind of rejuvenate the gardens of Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which is kind of a cool thing. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen that before. You know, we get a lot of Egyptian things and stuff. We don't often get further out. Yeah, um, um, there is one, but I can't remember it now off the top of my head. <laughs> that was really helpful. <laughs> oh, Ryan Kinitria, the Oh, he's Babylon is coming out this year. That's yeah, but he one. also had the, what was his famous one that was done, redone as the Yangtze and Yellow River. I don't know what the original, the original name was, of that was, yeah. but I know the Yangtze and Yellow River. Yeah. But anyway, this is a really gorgeous looking tile placement game um and i can't see why i wouldn't want it i'm always interested in bruno Cathala designs um he's a pretty talented designer and uh, yeah it caught, it caught my eye i'm not gonna lie I, I, you know i got bought in by the glitz and the glamour you like the tie lane i do i just i wish carcassonne was just that bit better um <laughs> monks for the win i know i know i like i i, I like to i like tile lane games i think they're just my kind of jam i think it's fun to build something with tiles um, so yeah, so that was my pick. Okay, so what's so next My next one is a pure speculation and you're going to laugh at what it is. Okay, go on. Okay. So it is Rallyman GT. <laughs> it's only a demo. Yeah. Because <laughs> I saw this and I thought of you. And oh, then yeah. I went, oh, we can't buy it. So I'm not buying it. See, I made a list of stuff I could buy. You seem to have made a list of mostly well, demos. Aspirational two, games. Yeah, two demos and four games that we can that we can buy while we're there. Well, I left off demos because I thought they weren't games. Like, for instance, you know, Kramer and Kiesling have a new game coming out called Paris. And there's a demo of that, but you can't buy it. Yeah, but the whole point of this <laughs> is that we can demo it while we're there and then we can mm. say we're going to buy it afterwards. Yeah. Oh, there's one piece of hair. It's going to be the death of me. You'll be fine. <laughs> Okay, so tell us more about Rallyman GT, Brian. I wonder what it's about. Okay. <laughs> uh, as, you, as you know, it's about your local congressman and you have to bring him to the rally. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a car racing game. And I love car racing games. Yeah, he does. I love pushing my look. I love crossing the finish line with one wheel, half an engine, and my driver maybe collapsed. That's like Formula D talking. Yes, Formula <laughs> D is one of my favorite games. No idea why, because it's literally just How's roll you, and move. Because you roll big dice. That's why. And you have a gear stick. I think that's the best thing about Formula D. You I, can change the gear. I think it's just the risk taking. I like the bit of... The risk taking. Okay, yeah. so what, what's Rally Man GT about? Are you literally just racing around the track? Racing around the track, pushing your luck, rolling dice, um, so watching there, the boards. So there's nothing different about between this game and Formula D, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, but it caught your eye then. It didn't caught it? my eye, and we'll take a look. Okay, I won't judge you for your choices until you try and spend money on them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. So what's next on my list? Okay, I have two. No, these I have two things left on my list now, and these are both gross speculation. Um, so I'll start with the first. Um, and this is called. 
let me pronounce this correctly, Taramara. And this comes from Quind Games. Um, and this looks like a civilization game. Like there's not a ton of information about it. There's some very interesting photos though on Bork and Geek, if you want to ch go check this out, of meeples and canoes. And it basically seems like you're growing your civilization with kind of different equipment and things like that over time. So you get to the kind of different levels. And we don't really have much of a civilization game at the moment. Like I thought about Tapestry for a bit, but I've heard it's not really a civilization game. <laughs> so I'm not really, I'm not really, like do we have anything else like that? Um, Maybe Gentes a Gentes, little bit. That's a, we've yeah. got Civilization Light <laughs> games. We don't yeah. have any heavy Civilization games. Yeah, we definitely don't. I don't think actually we want the time commitment of a very yeah. big game like that. We have that. a friend of ours who Twilight Imperium and that's enough. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is that, that's not. Is it really? I it's suppose space, it is Space Civilization. Space Civilization to me, I just, to me it's just a space opera. Like, here's the story of our lives. Told over 18 hours of play. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah. yeah, we don't have a Civilization game. And I think this one looks really pretty interesting. I really like the look of the board. Um, and so I'd like to see more about it. It's, it's one I haven't heard anybody else talking about either. Um, so yeah, I quite like that. So, Terra Mara. Okay, my you... last game isn't that much for speculation. Isn't it? Well, he's actually coming out with three games. Now, did the Spartan... Uber Rosenberg? He's <laughs> your favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Uwe Rosenberg is not my favourite. No, no, I don't not. mind the odd Uwe game, but he's not really my jam. <laughs> now, the game that, that, that really surprised us this year, mm -hmm. uh, Tokyo Metro, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love you to check. We got uh, Tokyo Metro and Tokyo Highway, Highway at the I'm same time and we confused a pair of them, which is horrific because they're very different games. Yeah. Um, so definitely, yeah, it's Tokyo Metro is the wooden Tokyo one. Tokyo Metro is a really heavy econ economic game. Is it heavy? You ha there's, a lo there's a lot of consideration to it because a lot of moving pieces. You can have up to 11 trains flowing at once. You kind of have to say what the game is. So the, what, what's it about? What do you do? You're building the Tokyo Metro. It's true. It's, it's true. true. It says it on the tin. <laughs> or um, on the tiny, tiny box. Yeah. So in this case, it's, it comes with, uh, unusually, a cloth mat. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you start off with a little man and he wanders around Tokyo building stations and sending trains in motion. Well, investing in them really is a... It's a... <sighs> Sorry, that's our dog. Yeah. I'm going to try and carry on like that didn't happen. <laughs> Because they're barking away like mad outside. But you know what? We yeah, yeah we're we're gonna get this thing done. We're gonna yeah. get there. And I'm doing lots of hand motions today. I'm like, what the hell? Oh! <laughs> what up? Like the, the nice thing. So, <laughs> so yeah, so Tokyo Metro is a really cool economic game yeah. about investing in like the metro in Tokyo. Um and you get shares and you wanna make money, you wanna stop. And you have to decide money. between whether you want your your train to make money or you to make money, because yeah. you can but you can also take loans. There's one of the few games where I like taking loans. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's got a really good loan system for a change. Yeah. But apart from that, and obviously we love it. So what's this about then? So he has actually got three games coming out. Jordan Draper? Jordan Draper has three games coming yeah, out. Yeah, Jordan Draper. Um, the one that I picked is Tokyo, mm -hmm. can not pronounce this market. Uh, <laughs> Come on, try. Uh, to, to Kejiki? Chizuchiki? Would anybody like to write in and tell us the real pronunciation? I think it's some sort of fish. Well, we can hope so. So it's, it's some sort of yeah. Tokyo market game. It's got game. all these these words that I really like. Economic, educational, environmental, farming, manufacturing, maths, <laughs> really? miniatures. Really? Okay, okay. Nautical, no, okay. And numbers. It's got, it's got, yeah. It's, and clearly this is not all the case. Yeah, as long as it has economic, it's usually good for me. I, uh, I think the point's more that we really enjoyed that first game design and there seems to be more coming out from in the series. Yeah. Like they're a very similar looking box, so I think they're going to be kind of connected. So yeah, we're totally interested in that. Yeah. If we don't pick up that, we'll probably pick up a second copy of Import Export. Is this other one? Is that his other game? The one that was on Kickstarter recently that was reprinted. Was it Import? The one with the golden pieces? It yeah. was very shiny. Very shiny. You can tell we don't buy a lot of Kickstarters as shiny and all as they look. It's just they're too expensive. I want my game now. Well, yeah, you, you've no patience. Me, I just like, it's a, it's a long time to have your money tied up and things. Okay, so that was your, that's my that, that's your, final, your, your pick. Okay, so my last pick is one that grabbed me because of the art. And then I, I read some more about it and I went, yeah, I'm sold. Because inside of my heart beats a dry euro. And I've got <laughs> to have uh, many, many of them. Um, and I'm not sure that this is a dry euro, by the way, because there, there's much to know about it, but it looks like it belongs in that category. And this is called Throne of Allegoria, and this is from Spielworks. Um, and these are the people who made Gentes. 
Oh. So I have mu- so I have a whole bunch of faith in this publisher. And its designer, um, he's got two designers, is Robin Lees, who I was talking to on Twitter lately. He told me to call by to his stand and say hi. Look at my hair, uh, which I totally will. And then the other designer is Steve McKenzie. Oh, goodness. What am I supposed to do with this thing? Just go with the manga here. As soon as you're going to have one that. <laughs> It works for all the time. I certainly not. Um, okay, so anyway, so this game looks like a medieval manuscript, which I think is really, really cool. And it's basically about like the the fight to become the next monarch. You know, the current reigning queen is on her deathbed, and you're all um, trying to be, you know, the next person in charge. You know, that seems like a fairly common and ordinary theme um but i love the way the cards look and it's got some really cool keywords on it as you say which is action points variable player powers worker placement and color me really interested i think it looks really really cool um and really fun and so i'd be dying to check it out and see what it looks like in person honorable mentions um and there's a couple of people i want to shout out to because they're games i've played and i think you should go and check out so one of those will be crooked terror games they have possession coming oh, out yes. possession's just coming off kickstarter um so you should, that's definitely what we're looking at another um person i'm a fan of is tate Wu, and he's the designer for promenade which i previewed last year and he has cat sudoku coming out this year which looks really cute and adorable i kind of want to check that out game. promenade's a fantastic game um and so that's also worth checking out and then finally of course there's my you know my friends and family nearly at this point of our emperor's four games no i'm not affiliated with them yes i have i reviewed two of their um essen releases they're actually having four in total so there's two more coming that i'm really excited about which is walking in provence um which looks like um, a french version walking in brano slightly different um and they also have some sort of really cool party game called geometric art where you have to draw shapes or pictures based on like die rolls the shapes on dice yeah, okay. so then um i'll be coming back with those from essen so i'm t- they're gonna be fun um so there's something you might want to pop by and check out they've had a, a bunch of really nice releases this year yeah. well, trials um, was very good stuff. yeah trial of the temples that was a really fun game um so what about you what okay. are you what are your animal so mentions the quick fire right there's a couple of expansions i try to literally expansions? Keep, keep expansions off my list because we, <laughs> we never play expansions. expansions so one is there's an expansion for captain sona which is one of my favorite games of all time but we need like four more people to play it you need like six more people we just can't play it one on one he's trying to do it but i refuse to go there yeah, okay we play it two on one i do love captain sona. sona it is a fantastic game it's an amazing game there's mm-hmm. uh Eight billion expansions from Cordia, which were <laughs> will always uh, accumulate. They were on my they were on my original need list, and then I realised we haven't played really with the one we got last year. That's the Concordia Venus maps. Yeah. So we love, we love Concordia, yes, but we need to play it more. Okay, so, carry on. And there's a sequel to Bruges. Bruges 1897. You mean Brussels? Brussels. Bruges is a very a different, different game, game. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> if there a... was a sequel to Bruges, there would be a freak out. Everyone would be like, oh my god. But there would be an expansion. Everyone wants the expansion for Bruges, isn't it? The yeah, really, the really, really, really rare one. Yeah. So yeah. what's uh, Brussels about, actually? It is a card game version of the original Brussels game. And what's the original all... Brussels game? I don't know. It's about like this it's one. a it's a Euro game where you're building Brussels in the late 1800s. Is it by Stefan Feld? No, it is by a guy. <laughs> then I don't know if I'm interested. Epperman. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, that's just something I don't know about. I hope also good things about it. So okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's all, it's it been out. on for trade list for ages. And then the what other game that I want to try out is one we're almost back on Kickstarter again. Mm. Lovelace and Babbage. Babbage now yeah. this is something close to my heart. <gasps> Programming. Programming. He's um, a programmer. Yeah. He made my website. <laughs> no, I didn't. Your website based on other people's technology. <laughs> I think no responsibility. <laughs> but anyway, Lovelace and Babbage is based on... So Babbage, for those people who don't know, is the inventor of the, one of the first computers mm-hmm. that got rejected at the time. And Lovelace is considered the world's first programmer, even though she didn't have anything to program on. Yeah. She wrote the first pseudo codes that would work on Babbage's mm-hmm. machine for a machine that she didn't even know would exist. Yeah. There you go. And the game looks very interesting. It's all about getting numbers to multiply to the numbers that you want to. Oh, you're kidding to. me! That's what it's about. Yeah, it's, it's matting. Math. It's matting. It's like you're you're setting things up into columns. <laughs> I could do math as long as I pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> when this game, you have components. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. That's something that's really fun. Yeah, too. and we did it almost back then, Kissa. But again, mm. when we back stuff and kicks out, we have to be very sure. We just we have like to be waiting. we have to be careful. Maybe other people have money to throw around. We know we're we're careful with what we get. Yeah. So that, that was basically it. So is um, it anything else? 
And not nothing else. Uh, to, uh, <laughs> nothing else. I have a ton of things that was like on the next tier down, right? Okay. So I, I did my best to pick the top things for this list. Um, I'm not going to list them all because I found it very hard to decipher, you know, um, what kind of things we actually wanted versus, you know, what we would actually play. Oh. Or nothing that really was like, really grabbed me that said I have to buy this. Well, like, the other thing is our collection has grown enormously since last year. That's true. We have a lot more games. And a lot of times we get games out, it has to be great, not just good, good. for us to keep it. Like there's mm. plenty of games that we play three or four times and then we go, mm. that's good. And we uh, want something else. We have a lot of competition, but I, th I, I you know, but that's just the, the nature of games. I don't, I do think though, that is a general consensus that there's less kind of, ooh, and ahs over stuff coming out this year. I'm also interested in what's the one that's Troyes, but with in space. Black, Black Angel? Yes. I'm vaguely, I'm vaguely interested in that. I, I, I really, I liked Troyes actually, but we, Trois. we, Trois. according to you, it's called Trois. It's According that's to... Trois in French. Okay, yeah. but we are not French, so I'm calling it Troyes because that's how everyone else will understand me. Yeah. <laughs> but that looks like a really cool version of it, especially in space. It's really impressive looking. Yeah, I would have thought space would up... appeal to me, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I, the, the graphics look too 1980s. That's the one a negative thing the 80s had the best graphics with everything in pink and, and neon it was good so yeah so things yeah. like that things like that popped out to me a bit and of course there's the ever dilemma between pipeline or barrage barrage uh yeah so you're saying barrage for a while i thought pipeline i'm still not entirely sure so that's there too so um probably that's... an interesting capstone games isn't it yeah that's right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah who also have published a game with a map of ireland but i don't get to play it because it needs three players Irish Gage needs to try. Irish Gage Rail, isn't it? Isn't that Irish the Gage. Is Irish Gage. With new artwork by Eno, Eno Tool, Tool. Who seems to be on everything. I know, I'm but he's... I wonder is he a company now or in the intro? <laughs> he's a time traveller, quite clearly. He's <laughs> like, I'll make all these pieces of art in the future there and bring them back. one of the games that I will mention, as I will mention, the Mine Extreme. Extreme. Not only oh, no. you count it up now, you count them down as well. No, no, there was enough with the Mind. I do not need any extreme version of the Mind. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> so, yeah. But so that's basically everything we picked. You may have noticed we don't really have any party games or anything like that in there because we usually it's just us playing games, right? So these are games that we thought we would play or we would have fun with. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing, you know, what ones you're excited about in the comments below. And of course, I'll be bringing you coverage from Essen because I'll have time to do it this yeah. year. Uh, is there anything you recommend? Just put it down in the comments. Yeah, we'll, we'll go check it out. Guess. Yeah, we'll go check it out and I'll be bringing you video and stuff like that from the whole event. Life from us. I hope we survive. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I hope it will be fun. We'll Do you think it'll be it. fun? It'll be very fun. It'll be fun. All right. It'll so be an adventure if nothing else. Yes, definitely an adventure. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like what we do, why not like or subscribe to the channel? It genuinely helps me out. And until next time, um, I'll be here playing games, asking questions, and seeing what else Brian put on his wish list. <laughs> They'll be honest, <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Take care, bye. bye.